Look who's here. <laughs> Guard dog. He bites, he bites. That's right, I'll bite him back. <laughs> They ran the cable right through the board. They sure did. <laughs> to that TV. Let me make sure that it. Where's your hammer? I, I think, I don't know, man. I think it's in my garage. <laughs> did you bring a hammer? That's right. Oh, thanks. Let me buy that. <laughs> it's a man's hammer anyways. You can't handle that bad boy. Yeah, your hair's all crazy. Is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's Monday morning, man. Jamie's made it in. He's got pro tip. For here you. we go. Here we go. Uh, we're putting this nailer in, and there's only one way that we can attach it, which is like straight along this edge into another piece. There's brick over here. I can't get to that. We side. can't toe screw it that way. We can't shoot it from the back. The only way is to toe nail it or screw it from this one side. So here's kind of the tip, and, and Eric was saying this start your screw kind of square to the board, like yep. 90 degrees. And then once you get it about an eighth of an inch in, you can just bend it over and then you get a really steep angle. That's almost like doing a pocket screw. It That's is. really what we're trying if to do. If you were a beginner, how would you think you would go about this? Is this is fun to watch, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> what you would do is hold it at the angle you want it to go in. Right. And then you would uh, just try to get it started. No, I got it. Oh, oh well, yeah. it actually did. Oh. oh, no, this is beginner. Oh, see, I'm still trying to do it like I should there. I'm going to just do beginner stuff here. Okay, no, we got it any second now. It's going to catch. It's going to work. No, I'm pretty sure. I feel like this deserves a little more explanation to know why the steep angle is so important. A typical toenail is about, what, 45 degrees? Yeah. So if we come back here, we shoot a nail in, boom, we miss out the back. Yeah. All right? That's no good. What I'm trying to do is back up about another half inch, start here, and go like that. Yes. Now we're talking, like I said, about like that pocket screw kind of thing. So... If you were to, uh, say, take your trusty nail gun here and try to toenail it, you got gonna glasses get something on. that uh, it's like this. Yep. All right. Oh, got it. It's nailed. And it's you look nailed. at it, you come around the corner, the boss man says, all right, that's great. But that's what you got. <laughs> and you know what that is? Nothing. nothing. You got nothing. Yeah, that would just pull Absolutely off. nothing. So, uh, again, the toe screw at the angle here is, is really All the right, let's best. let's make sure we can do this for real. Start oh, it in. I'm going to start it here, and then I'm going to go steep. Actually, I can see that it's, well, it's not quite in line with my drawing there, but I'll... There you go. Tweak it in. And, and uh, oh, it did tip it out the back just a out. tiny bit. So I should have gone steeper to match my angle there. And, but that's uh, the idea. Yep. I've seen a lot of nails up the back of boards like that. Oh, yeah, and you think it's good, but it's not. This house used to be white. Look at that. Yeah. Um, we're going to figure out the intersection of the new soffit and fascia and the old soffit and fascia. Ideally, everything lines up perfectly. In the case that our new soffit is slightly higher or lower, we're going to leave the bottom of this old fascia board sticking down as a break so that, you know, if there is a slight difference, you won't see it. Right. You know, it'll it just give us it. a break, and um, I think it's going to help us out. Now, our heights were supposed to be the same, but if we were off, say, even a quarter inch, uh, and you just try to butt our new soffit finish material to that, it's going to be like a quarter inch jog down. It's going to look terrible. see it, although we're kind of in the although, back. Although, yeah, we're way up high. I think this is just yeah. an easy, clean way to do it. It is, and it'll look good, too. We'll do the same thing on the other side. You got some foliage on your head. I do? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Uh, Yo, shooter. Yeah. Huh? Check it out. We got our first bit of finish material put on today, and that's the finished fascia. The reason we're doing that now is that we can't put the finished roof on without putting the drip edge over top of the finished fascia. So that has to go on now. And um, we're just shooting it on with 16s. <laughs> That's all we got, galvanized 16 ring shank nails. Um, but that will definitely hold it. What Jason's doing here is a pretty important step since we're not putting drip edge on today. We don't want water running in right there. Wow, get out of the way. <laughs> so we're just gonna seal that gap with some zip tape. We're gonna roll the tape off camera because we don't have our zip roller up here with us. But so you, you gotta roll the tape because it's a pressure activated adhesive. Yeah, what he said. Yeah, so when you press on it, that's when it really sticks. I guess you could just like do that everywhere, but that'll hurt your hand. Kind of like how Ray was hammering this morning. <laughs> yeah. 
they were probably trying to come up with like the, you know, roll the tape kind of slogan and they're like, slap the tape, I don't know. <laughs> Smack it, slap it, I don't know, what else? Stop no. it, Wami, uh, slap it. Yeah, well. Smack that tape! Jono was working up here, taking this down, he dropped his bit in this bush. Did you find it? Did you find your bit? Ray did. How did he find it? With his wallet magnet. Hmm. What? Yeah, I don't know. I just got done framing in these little gable studs and I did them flat because there's no insulation value needed here. The insulation is going to be at this level. So none is needed there. So we don't need like the full three and a half thickness. And this is it for this wall. It's just like a ceiling joist with a nailer and it's going to be sheathed because this entire front part is going to be like a commercial glass storefront. It's going to be all glass with like black aluminum dividers floor to ceiling, wall to wall, everything. You know what really ticks me off is when I'm trying to put these braces on one side because I do one side first. And then in the meantime, somebody else grabs the other side, starts fiddling with that, trying to get it lined up before I get this one done. <laughs> Dude, I will lose it. What are you guys doing down here? Uh oh. Don't worry about it. Guys. Uh, well, what we're really doing actually is putting more fasteners attaching the band to the brick. And I've got some special brackets I made, a big heavy angle iron to go underneath the girder that's gonna bolt straight to the brick column. We already did the hanger, I know. The hanger's great and all that, but I want just a little added, you know, something for it to sit on. Okay. Now these are installed, but we cannot tighten the nuts here on the bolt because the epoxy is wet. I have the nut set right where I want it, flush with the end of the bolt. Tomorrow we'll come back and just snug those bolts. I've got it attached here to the bottom of the girder with a couple of wood uh, decking screws, structural screws. Should be good to go. problem here is we're beating this brick off the wall and it's uh swinging the cabinet doors open and then as we're hitting all the cups are <laughs> falling out of the cabinets we got in here dude all these glasses were like <laughs> teetering a couple fell out so <clears throat> we're gonna get rid of these cabinets so i'm just gonna zip tape the uh, door shut for now and uh i might put another one no, it's got it. Okay. That's not coming open. Just hit straight in on that. Straight in. Boom. Yeah. We need to break that. That's in half. yeah, break that. That's gonna go right through the deck if that comes off there. Here. Jose can break a... <laughs> I'm this thing right outside. You gonna go straight out That's with it? Bust. I mean, I yeah, yeah, through. just... Oh! Oh! oh. 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 How's your toes? Catch me outside. Catch me outside, how about that? <laughs> Let's take a second to thank our sponsor for today's video, Vever Tools, and they make very affordable tools. So if you're new to construction or you're looking to get a piece of equipment you don't have, check them out. I just got the Vever 3500 watt demolition hammer, which would be a great tool if you need to jackhammer up some concrete to like add drain lines in a basement remodel or something like that. Wow, that was the most manly thing I've done ever, I think. This tool came with two interchangeable chisels that swap out really easy, also has a 360 swivel handle, a viewable oil port, and it also has a lockable trigger, and this thing has great reviews on Amazon. It's also got a powerful 3600 watt motor that's great for blasting through concrete, rock, brick, or anything like that. For like 150 something dollars, this thing is amazing. So if you need some tools and you're on a budget, check out the link in our description below to the Vever Tools storefront on Amazon. 
There's also a link for the demolition hammer. And there's also a promo code good for 10% off through June 17th. Make sure to check those out. And thank you to Vever for sponsoring our video. Let's get back to work. Does it look like I'm in a space shuttle or something? Yeah, man. <laughs> So all this brick that we're knocking off here, we have to put in a wheelbarrow and then go through this finished house with it, like this. <laughs> Catch me on site, how about that? Yeah. I mean, we could toss it off the deck, but then it's way down the hill um, in a worse place than on the deck. So. Remodeling, love it. Yeah. Love it. Put in the, put in the back of that silver right, truck. Let's make a pile. Let's put in the now back the of homeowner that did truck. tell us. Right there, <laughs> that truck right there. The homeowner actually told us to just make a pile, even though it's gonna be a lot of work to just pick this up again. Um, thinking right here. What do you think? Ooh. Concrete can hurt concrete. Nice move. Right what do you call that? Twist and turn, spinning. All right, so hold this level level. Like... <clears throat> you make it be level now. Yep. Two three sixteenths. Two and three sixteenths. Huh. So that's showing different here. It's showing an inch and a half. Whoa. I mean, so, is my, am I crazy adding that under it? I'm mm. trying to figure out why right here, the subfloor looking piece of material is flush with our inch and a half of brick that's sticking up from our deck here. But right there, there's five eighths more height on the subfloor. We've got this figured out to where when this level is level, it should sit on both of these if they're level. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's not. Oh, it's not. Any uh, theories? We we have a little idea. Sometimes in older homes, they would plywood the subfloor thing. And I think on, you used on the plywood joist. correctly there. So then after the walls are built, then they add another layer of 5 8 like particle board on top of the subfloor. Cut it out in between all the rooms and the wall plates and everything like that as another layer. Yeah, I've had a house like that. Mm, I've seen that. Like that. So if any of you folks were wondering why it doesn't really matter if you have a really detailed plan for remodeling, this is it. Because you would have no idea to draw how you're going to build this on the plan till you actually tear it apart, which we're still trying to do and figure out. Now we're pulling in stuff. <laughs> wow. Uh, so that does look like particle board. Dude, it looks like they had tile glued straight to the... You know what they um, did? And I know that because I came in here and helped Matt chip up all the tile in this whole room oh, for fun. Wow. Well, I think the mystery has, <clears throat> has been revealed. So that's well, a five we, eighths we or half. It revealed. does, and it does run under the cabinets as Ray uh, knew that it did. But it does not run under the plate. No, nope. no. Nope. So what we're seeing is the plate on the exterior wall sitting on the actual subfloor and then everything else sitting on this particle board. It's a double layer bottom. They built this thing like the Titanic. <laughs> the Titanic sink, bro. We've just done a bunch of measuring of different thicknesses of materials that we have here to hey, see how we're gonna stack it up. You sorry know? to interrupt you, but your hair is doing something crazy today. I feel crazy right now. All this thinking, remodeling, uh, wheelbarrowing I mean, bricks through the house. <laughs> I'm telling you what, if this is what remodeling does to you after only like a week. That's what it does to you. So here's the deal. Um, our Advantech material here, get on down here. If I line her up is, uh, just 11. under three quarters. It's almost 11. It's 11 I think they said it's 16. 20, 2 30 seconds? Whatever, 11 sixteenths. Let's do the math. <laughs> so if you add up 11 sixteenths times three, it's pretty much exactly two and an eighth, which is our difference between our deck height and our existing Wait. subfloor. Wait a minute. Is that so, right? Yes. Something that ends in an odd 16th. We may be a 16th plus or minus. Okay, I, I think you're right. 11. 11. Another 11. 11. And a final 11. That should be uh, 33 sixteenths, if I'm not mistaken. 
Two and an eighth. Two and an eighth. That's what we want. That is exactly what we want. And I actually was getting two and three sixteenths, and you got two and an eighth, and yeah. we moved it. It's a little shifty. <laughs> okay. So I, I, think I don't think it's moving. I think our level was moving. I think it's going to be good. Yeah. So that was kind of lucky that just using one material, we can just do some layers. I don't know if it's lucky. It just, it is what it is. It is what it is. There's no debate in that. What'd you do today, honey? I <laughs> drew 400 lines. That's a no good. We'll probably use it for something. I gotta show you folks what it takes to get the shot. Look at Ray. Look at him. Look at him. <laughs> That's what it takes. Thanks, man. I the mean, world appreciates it. It's been worse. <laughs> Has it? Uh, yeah. Okay. I so. <laughs> get ready, Ray gets the shot. <laughs> what are you doing, bud? What? <laughs> man, look how dirty I am. <laughs> I had to get the shot. You win. You've been working the hardest. Look yeah, at that. Know. Wow. <laughs> Just a note, we're putting our furring strips right on top of the floor yeah. joists, not out in between them. Even though this is a full two by decking, which is pretty stout, I think we gotta go right on the joists, eh? Sure. We're doing a Vita Lexel on both sides of this. Usually we'd use the Advantech subfloor adhesive, but I forgot the spray gun for that today. So we're using Lexel. And then we're screwing them down so nothing will squeak, hopefully. That's the plan. So this could be great training for carpenters to walk on floor joists without the danger of falling through the floor. Yeah, it's like a little safety uh, set up here. Go, 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 go. Nice. He's he's fine. He's, he's good. good. See how he's got his arms like that? <laughs> oh, wow. Dude, did you just take ballet or something? No, it had a little spin over <laughs> See, what guys don't understand is I don't even care if you're 50 feet up in the air. If you're walking on 16 centers, even if you fall... You're not gonna fall. You're just gonna. You're gonna your hurt your arms because you're gonna catch yourself. But you're not gonna fall. It's not gonna you feel would, good. You would have to like pencil it like in the water <laughs> to get through. You'd have to be raised size to fit through there. But the other thing is, it goes like me. I'm good. One rep between your legs, and then that's the worst option. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not gonna work unless you have your cup on. Cup check. <laughs> when I was at a pool party once, when I was a kid. Oh God, here we go. What? My friend's house. They were remodeling a deck, and it was just a joist. Yeah. And I was like already kind of a carpenter. Yeah. I thought I'd go running across the joists and I did. And freaking I missed one. <laughs> <laughs> I busted my shin so bad in front of everybody. Yeah. Embarrassed for life. Trying to be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that completes your uh, carpenter walking on joist training 2022 certificate. Ray and Jamie, you passed. Congratulations. So we were talking and I think he's recommending maybe reshingling this whole half of the house right now when they hit that because pulling these old shingles and weaving in may not be easy. Ooh, wow, look at that. See, I didn't even see that. Yeah. You gotta let the man think. It's gonna be up to him if he wants to uh... He wants to throw the money away that we're going to spend on the cap in there. Yeah. Oh, and man. this was another spot where the uh, soffit was really oh, deteriorated right here where uh, you can see the water was leaking right in and underneath the so soffit's just rotten. My recommendation is if he can afford it, let's get it done. Just do the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he would regret having new. Yeah. So much we're talking here, like two or three hundred bucks. Yeah. <laughs> Broken shingles. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a that's Broken a good one there. Wood. Yeah, that's yeah, all just loose. Yeah. yeah. 
So he knows what to look for. Yeah. Where's the good spots? Let's find them. <laughs> Back out here tomorrow. Yep. Same bat time, same bat channel. You can't do that on YouTube, bro. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh this is crap. God. A million that is... people just saw you short your pants. <laughs> At least they just heard Can it. Can he do that? Sure. You better, are you going to check your drawers, I hope? <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs>